What's up everybody, Greg here with lens to go and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I have a very special guest who's gonna teach you something about the fundamentals of imaging and he's gonna show you how to create a camera obscura in your own home. It's a really fun experiment that you can do with not a lot of prep and not a lot of materials. So I'm gonna throw it over to him and he's gonna show you exactly how to do it and teach you some tips and tricks to get the best results possible. Hey guys, so the other day I basically turned my bedroom into a camera. So what I mean by this is I essentially blacked out every source of light in the room with the exception of one small hole in the window so that everything that is in view from that hole actually gets projected and inverted onto the opposite wall, essentially putting you inside a giant camera. So the proper name for this is a camera obscura and it's basically the most fundamental type of photography you can do. This experiment is super fun and you can do it with ordinary household materials and you might actually learn something and gain a deeper perspective on how we create images. So in this video, I'll show you everything that I did and I'll show you everything that you need to do to pull this off at home. So before you gather your materials, there are some things that you should know. Although this effect is possible on a cloudy day, it will come out much better when it's bright and sunny out. You'll need to make sure you have a room in your house that works for this experiment. Pick a room that has a window with a mostly blank wall on the opposite side. Also, the effect can't be achieved if the sunlight is directly coming through the window, so if that's the case, you may need to try a different time of day. Okay, so I've determined that this room is going to work best for this experiment. There's not a whole lot of blacking out to do, and I'm going to choose this window to put the pinhole in because the view from this window is pretty well illuminated in sunlight, although there's no sunlight coming directly through this window. And opposite this window is a mostly blank wall where the image is going to end up. Next, you'll need some large pieces of cardboard or poster board. Make sure you have enough to completely cover all of the windows in your room. You'll need plenty of painter's tape or gaff tape, a pair of scissors or a craft knife. Scissors work, but a box cutter or craft knife will be much more precise. You'll also need some smaller pieces of cardboard for the different aperture cards. Finally, a couple of small circular objects of different sizes that you can trace like a quarter or a bottle cap. Now that you have your materials ready, we are going to use those smaller pieces of cardboard to make a few different aperture cards. A smaller aperture will generate a sharper but less bright image, where a larger aperture will be brighter but a little softer. Your room at home may be different than mine, so it's good to have a few different options. First thing you need to do is cut out a rectangle from your big piece of cardboard that is slightly smaller than your aperture cards. This piece will go in the window that you want to get an image from. Next, trace the circular objects onto each of your pieces of smaller cardboard and carefully cut them out using your craft knife. Hold onto these aperture cards for now, we'll need them once the room is totally blacked out. This effect is best observed in total darkness, so do your best to block out every source of light in the room. This includes cracks under doors or other small light sources. Any bit of light coming into the room will make the image harder to see. Once your room is blacked out, you are ready to put on one of your aperture cards. You can hold up the cards in front of the hole to determine what aperture card works best for your room. Keep in mind that it can take up to 30 seconds for your eyes to adjust to the darkness. Once you find the card that works best, you can tape it in place. When I did this, I used a shipping envelope that was too thin and it was letting light through. This made the image very faint, so I had to add some tape to block out the light. Here's the first look at the image I got with my large aperture card. And this is just on video with the ISO cranked up and it's still pretty visible. If you want to really capture this image, you can take a long exposure. 10 to 20 seconds should be enough and that will get the image to pop. If you want to see some creative photography using this technique, you should check out photographer Abelardo Morel, who uses a portable tent camera that he made to create some stunning images. I'll leave a link to more of his work in the description below and you should definitely check it out because they are awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and this little experiment from Dom. If you were able to try it out for yourself, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. If you guys want to learn more about the fundamentals of photography and video, I have a whole playlist going through things talking about aperture, choosing cameras, choosing lenses, all of those different things, and I'll throw a link to that right up here as well as at the end of the video. If you guys enjoy this one, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.